Hi guys, it's time for another quick progress update on my DIY sailboat refit. In the last video I started taking apart the galley in order to get rid of the old icebox or fridge and of course to get rid of all that dang foam. In this video I'll give you a quick peek at the state of the galley and also talk a little bit about the future plans. I'll also grab some new moisture measurements from the hull and compare those to last week's measurements. In the end of this video, I want to share something super off topic with you, but we'll get to that. In my last video, I asked what it costs to keep a boat up on the hard where you're located, and thank you for all the awesome replies. I found that very interesting. To expand on that topic, I thought I'd tell you what my yearly slip fee is here in Skive. So for Athena, my yearly slip fee is 1200 US dollars, and provided you're not a liverboard, that includes electricity and water. But because I'm a liverboard, electricity is metered separately at 35 cents per kilowatt hour. But still, my yearly slip fee is 1200 US dollars. About a week and a half ago, I placed 24 marks on each side of the hull. The purpose of that being to track the process of the hull drying. The moisture levels in the hull do need to drop significantly before I can proceed to the next step in my DIY osmosis treatment. So let's go ahead and grab some measurements and compare those to last week's measurements. That's one of my marks and here we've got the meter. I've got last week's and this week's measurements on this box here and just from looking at them, it doesn't look all that great. Without further ado, here are the current measurements as well as the changes over the last week and a half. If you want to take a closer look at these, just pause the video. I've been measuring the moisture levels in the hull on a daily basis, but much like I suspected, the fluctuations are so minute that my meter just doesn't pick them up. So I can't really show you a chart of that, but hopefully over time I'll get some interesting data. The results I just showed you are not uplifting. At this rate, I'll definitely not have Athena back in the water this fall. Going by the theory that you should be able to dry out a GRP hull without using dehumidifiers or heaters, well there are a couple of explanations as to why the hull is drying so slowly. So one explanation could be that there are hydrophilic compounds trapped within the laminate that needs to be washed out. I've stated before that I am uh, slightly skeptical about whether or not that's the case. The second explanation, and I think this is much more likely, could be all the rain we've been having for the past month or so. That would result in a much higher humidity in the air, which would certainly slow down the process. Still, although I am very skeptical, I'm still gonna wash the hull a couple of times this coming week and we'll see what the measurements are like next weekend. Now, of course, that's not really a good test of the theory that there are hydrophilic compounds trapped within the laminate because, well, I have nothing to compare my measurements to and I can't control the weather out here. So if next week it's gonna be super sunny and have low humidity, well, the hull is probably gonna dry more during the next week than it has during the last week and a half. I've made a bit of progress in the galley. Not a lot, but let's take a look. If it wasn't for my pesky 9 to 5 full-time job, I'm sure I'd have gotten a lot further, but at least I'm making progress and that's all that really matters to me right now. And as you might be able to see in the background there, I've also been busy sanding. It might not show up that well on camera, but I'm almost done sanding the starboard side of the main saloon, but we'll get back to the sanding in just a few moments. I was going back and forth between tearing out the entire galley and rebuilding everything from the ground up or just replacing the pieces that actually needs to be replaced. I can't really think of any major changes I'd like to make to this galley. I might need to spend some time living aboard Athena before I realize exactly what it is I want, but I hope that makes sense. For now, I've decided just to leave the galley as is and Sure, I'll paint everything and make it look nice, but I won't do any major changes to the layout. I'd be very interested to hear what kind of changes you would make to the galley here aboard Athena. If you've got some suggestions, please go ahead and leave them as a comment down below. I will make some subtle changes to the galley, for instance these things here where you need to pub your finger into a hole in order to open this. It's not that I don't like the look of them, it's just that I've got this sneaking suspicion that at some point while on the way I'm gonna break a finger while trying to open one of those things. Last week a Warrior 40 spent some time here in Skiva and I got to meet the owners, we got to hang out and check out each other's boats and it was a lot of fun. And uh, this is a picture of the galley aboard the Warrior 40. And this is the galley here aboard Athena. So as you can see, not a lot has changed, especially considering that Athena is from 1987 and that Warrior 40, I believe that was from 1995. But let's get back to my future plans for the galley. Now, it was super interesting to read the comments on my last video. It was almost like a few of you guys were able to read my mind regarding what I wanted to do about the countertop. 
I've removed the piece of the countertop that had dry rot. What I'm planning on doing is to make a nice straight cut here. With this piece out of the way, I'll then attach a slot cutting bit to my router and make room for a spline. By using a spline, I won't have to reinforce the underside of the countertop and that'll leave this nice and flush for when I need to install my new fridge or icebox. When I'm done, this will be good as new and you won't be able to see that there's a repair here. Hopefully in the next video I'll be able to show you some Formica samples for the countertop. Speaking of Formica, there's still some laminate I need to remove. Now I don't know if the way I'm doing it is the way of doing it, but it's certainly a way of doing it. I use a heat gun and something to pry in between the laminate and the plywood. When I've gotten started, I just tend to use whatever I've got around. This is a piece of the old backsplash from the galley. Because the laminate extends in underneath this piece here, I'll just use a knife to score along here so that the laminate snaps in a nice straight edge. Ta-da! Ready for new laminate. Now I still need to remove the stuff that's down here, but I won't bore you with that. This is the stove that came with Athena and it looks to be in good working order. I mean, sure, it's a little dirty from all the dust right now, but it's in good working order. In fact, the only thing I don't really like about this stove is the color of this door and that's hardly an excuse to replace it. One tiny modification I might do is to replace this screw right here with a thumb screw. That'll allow me to replace this bit here while the stove is still mounted and that should make it easier to clean it. And it most certainly is in need of a good cleaning. When I was still considering tearing apart the galley and rebuilding from scratch, I started looking into other stoves I might upgrade to. If I was going to rebuild from scratch anyways, it makes sense to build the galley around a stove that has a really good reputation. So I found the Force 10 stoves, which appear to have a reasonably good reputation. But it turns out that a three burner Force 10 stove here in Denmark is 2200 US dollars, which is just a, it's insane if you ask me. So I'd love to get your recommendations on what kind of stove I should upgrade to once it comes time to replace the one I've got now. Oh, and this one is a Neptune 2000 from Plastimo. By the way, before I move on to the next segment in this video, that is all the foam from the galley. That's five huge bags of the stuff, so let's get that out of here. In the hopes of gaining sovereignty and thereby lower taxes, I've decided to attempt to build my own garbage island. All it needs now is a few rolls of duct tape and I'll be ready to start my utopian society. Seriously, this is half the stuff I've removed from Athena so far. As you might have been able to tell from the footage up until now, I've also been busy sanding. That, of course, is in preparation of painting and varnishing the entire saloon. Now, I've been sanding for a good while before I realized that, wait a minute, I've got really, really nice parents so I decided to invite them for a visit. Fair warning, if you are considering having kids and either you or your better half carries the DIY gene, well then your kids are gonna be predisposed and you are most likely gonna be in for a lifetime of sanding. Now until my parents can make their way down here, I'll continue to sand an hour or so each day after work. Progress is slow, but I'm getting there. I know I've shown you this scraper before, but I think this guy merits another appearance because it's amazing how much easier it is to get rid of the old varnish using this guy. All this area needs now is a very, very light sanding. And now that area is basically ready for paint. Of course, the larger surfaces like the one I've just sanded there are a lot quicker to deal with than all of the trim. But the scraper is also a big help on the trim pieces. The only downside I can think of to using this guy is the fact that, well, it can gouge the wood if you're not careful. As a small experiment, I've rounded over the edges of this blade with my angle grinder and so far I've had no issues with gouging. It seems to me that using the scraper before sanding is not only faster, but also keeps the sandpaper from gumming up. So yeah, that's a win-win. It is kind of difficult to come up with exciting content when all I'm basically doing right now is sanding. 
So please consider that before you slap a dislike on this video. But before we head back to Obelix, there's one last thing I want to mention. I know this might sound odd, but I'm really excited about my new charger. Sure, it's managed to charge the batteries, but that's not really why I'm excited. The reason I'm so excited doesn't really have that much to do with the charger, although it is an awesome charger, it's just that every time I look at it, I'm reminded of an upcoming project that I'm very much excited about, and that of course is rewiring the 12 volt system here aboard Athena. Now, sadly for now, there are more pressing matters, but that doesn't stop me from dreaming about this project. So I've already started picking out a distribution panel, buses and LED lights for the headliner and dimmer switches and all kinds of wonderful stuff. But uh, yeah, for now, I'll have to keep myself entertained with just sanding. I'll call it an early day and head back to Obelix to spend some time with Jökull, but before ending this video I want to show you that super off-topic thing I mentioned in the beginning of this video. A few weeks back I had a visit from some new German friends of mine who kept their boat here in Skive over the weekend. Now they showed me something that I would have never thought of myself. And remember this is very much off-topic. We need a watermelon and we need a lemon. All I need to do now is to cut these into cubes, but wait. Wait, wait a minute. Ah, I think I might have found my clickbait thumbnail for this video. With the watermelon transformed into cubes, this is where things get interesting. Watermelon with lemon. It might be common in other parts of the world, but it sure as heck isn't common here in Denmark. And I mean, it's freaking delicious. It's so much better than just watermelon. You should try it. It's very important to get the balance right. Don't just throw a ton of lemon on there. That'll ruin it. But if you get the balance just right, it's amazing. Well, I want to eat my watermelon and then I want to go play with Jökull. So uh, I guess that's it for this video, guys. See you. Jökull and I hope you've enjoyed this video. For more videos like it, click subscribe. Please consider leaving a comment and a thumbs up. It really helps me a lot and I appreciate your support very much. If you're new to the channel, please check out the introduction playlist. If you want to watch every single video I've ever published, check out the playlist named All Videos. It contains every single video listed in chronological order.